Gato. So uh, I'm a PhD student at the uh, Université Paris Sorbonne Nord, and I'm going to present my work on uh, prior information enhanced uh, reinforcement learning for energy management systems. So uh, rapidly, uh, we'll uh, go through an introduction. I'll present the case study. Uh, then we'll uh, we'll talk about the algorithmic uh, proposition and we'll conclude. So for the context, uh, the uh, global energy context context is uh, still rising. Uh, there's a uh, an increase in uh, energy global energy consumption from the late 70s. We consumed uh, 5,000 uh, terawatt hours of energy. Uh, in the late 2010s, uh, it reached uh, 20,000, and the, the the projection to uh, 2040 is around uh, 30,000 terawatt hours. So uh, what the 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 uh, energy agency uh, tells us is that uh, there is a cor correlation between the energy uh, uh, consumption, the associated emissions, and the rise of population and floor area. And we know that nowadays 56% uh, of the world's population uh, lives in, uh, in cities, and that uh, in 2050, the UN uh, uh, sets uh, 2 billion people uh, uh, more and uh, twice the, the the number of city dwellers. So uh, we'll focus uh, more particularly on uh, buildings and household, uh, because uh, we know that um, with the rise of population and floor area, the the the, the share of uh, building in uh, global energy consumption, which is uh, already thirty percent and uh, uh, the same amount for emission, is going to rise. So uh, it's also a uh, a subject of interest for a uh, household uh, as uh, it uh, the energy expenditure share of uh, of the budget of uh, european household is around 10 to 25% depending on the country uh, so we know that uh, almost 80% of the of the of the energy used by buildings is for heating and this is uh, uh, an important factor for us because uh, uh, we know that we can delay the use of uh, of energy for this purpose Either by storing uh, thermal energy into um, into uh, into uh, 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 like uh, uh, water storing devices, or uh, directly storing uh, electricity uh, with the use of, of batteries. Uh, so uh, recently, the, the 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 field of energy management system um, uh, gained a lot of attention with the the the, the changes uh, around the uh, global warming. And uh, energy management system are systems that can monitor, control, and optimize energy production and consumption. So uh, it can be applied to buildings in our case, and uh, it depends on the objective you want to you want to optimize. Um, but it can re reduce energy wastage, uh, reduce cost, uh, bolster reliability of uh, different uh, systems such as batteries. Uh, it can uh, mitigate environmental impact or safeguard components from potential damage uh, due to overloading, for example. Uh, in our case, we'll uh, we'll see that uh, we're going to use it for uh, for two uh, for two objectives. Uh, well, buildings are increasingly e electrified, uh, so uh, that's uh, one of the of the reason that energy management systems are now uh, deployed into new buildings uh, because uh, there are more sophisticated, there are more connected appliances, and and uh, and so it uh, it enables the system to uh, to better uh, manage the, the building. Uh, so our objective is to uh, deploy a multi-objective uh, energy management system. So we uh, are focusing on two uh, on two objectives: the economic one, which depends on the depends on the financial cost of uh, of a kilowatt hour of energy, and the environmental one, which uh, which uh, corresponds to uh, the the carbon emissions of a, of a kilowatt hour of energy taken from the grid. So um, at every time step, uh, there's an associated cost. Which depends for the economic cost on the uh, time of use tariffs set by the set by the the the, the grid operator and the, the the carbon emission, which depends on the electrical mix that generated the the energy coming from the grid. So for the data, we use the the Citylan environment, which is a gymnasium environment. Uh, it's uh, totally open source and it encapsulates around 60 buildings that are located in four climate zones in the U.S. So it's a uh, real data of uh, building consumption, and every building is uh, specific. They have uh, different uh, heating and uh, and ventilation uh, appliances. They have uh, for some uh, storage devices, uh, uh, gener uh, energy production systems, and and so on. So we'll see that there are different types of buildings, uh, such as the residential buildings, non-residential buildings. There are also um, factories. So there's a 
uh, uh, a large panel of, uh, of different uh, buildings. So the problem at hand is uh, how to learn an optimal energy management policy and uh, how can this policy be generalized? So uh, for the first problem, uh, in our case, we are going to manage the charge and discharge cycles of energy uh, storage units. And uh, we chose to model this problem as a reinforcement learning problem uh, with, uh, using the, the Markov uh, decision process. Um, this is a paradigm where the agent learns a policy by itself, by trial and error. It only receives a, a, a signal, <clears throat> sorry, a reward signal from the environment based on the action it has taken. So uh, the states uh, we chose for uh, our agents is um, a set of uh, variables that represent the consumption the, and the production of the of the building, um, time information so that the agent can set himself into a into a a, um, a, a, a scene a particular scene, and uh, the state of charge of the system. Uh, the actions of the of the agent is to is to charge or discharge part of the storage capacity it has. And the reward is the weighted cost of the network use because the cost comes from uh, uh, the, the energy you, you take from the grid. And so uh, this, uh, even if you store it uh, for later use, uh, we, can, we, can um, we can derive the, the cost from the original charging phase. So we transform the action space. Uh, the original action space is a, is a continuous uh, action space. But uh, we know that uh, there is a set of constraints that apply to the action uh, to the action space. For example, uh, uh, if your storage device don't don't, don't have uh, any um, it doesn't have any energy uh, inside, you cannot discharge your uh, your storage unit, and you have to take every uh, every energy you want from the grid. So you you have to pay uh, the the cost of using the grid. There's also another set of constraints, such as uh, the maximum input and output power that you can uh, that you can uh, use with your storage system. So all those information are known uh, at hand. They are known before beforehand. So we can uh, we can use those information uh, to pass it to the agent, so that the agent doesn't have to learn it by itself. So we're going to we are we are going to discretize the action space, uh, so that we can uh, uh, we can make a post processing step. Uh, to mask the action space to only leave valid action uh, to the to the to the agent. Uh, so we use the proximal policy optimization algorithm, which is an actor critic uh, algorithm, and uh, basically uh, the post-processing step um, occurs when the agent, the actor model, takes an uh, an action, and uh, the mask guarantees that uh, we sample only uh, trajectories that are made of that are made up of valid actions. And that uh, the val only valid actions are used to calculate the gradient. So uh, if we do not uh, take this post-processing step, uh, the agent may take invalid actions that are categorized as valid action, which which is going to uh, introduce a bias into the model, and the agent won't learn a, a, an efficient policy. Um, so uh, the 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 actor model is a uh, which is represented by the policy network uh, is a neural network. So it uses a softmax function and uh, and, uh, and invalid actions are masked by uh, assigning significant negative logit values uh, so that uh, their sampling is uh, probability is zero by the agent. Um, so uh, we make uh, also a short-term correction uh, module because uh, there is a time lag between the reality and the observation that the, that the agent observes. So the agent uh, observes the, only the last uh, time step and so uh, it has to take a decision for the next hour based on the, the information of the last uh, the last time step. So uh, there is a, a lag between uh, the reality and the observation, and uh, this can cause problem because the, the time of use tariffs can vary from an, ad, an hour to another, and the, the, the prices and the tariffs can double uh, or triple in uh, just a, a, a step of one hour. So this is crucial for uh, for optimizing the, the cost of uh, of the utilization of the of the grid energy, so we have to make this correction so that the ag the agent uh, is able is able to to anticipate the the shift in time of two terms. So we use a, an MLP for the prediction because we know that from a time step to another there is a, a quasi linear dependence between uh, between the between the value. Um, so uh, we compared our, our learned policy uh, to a classic algorithm that are used uh, for uh, energy management system in uh, in continuous action space. 
And what we can see is that uh, by using, by integrating prior information uh, on the actions base, uh, our solution converges uh, uh, more rapidly. And, and this is uh, this is because the agent doesn't have to, uh, to learn the constraints that are upon the action space. It only has to, to, uh, to focus on learning the optimal policy. And uh, as, as we see, we, we converge to a better solution uh, uh, by integrating those, uh, those constraints. So now that we know how to, uh, to learn an optimal energy management policy, how can this policy be generalized? Um, you, can, uh, you can use two naive approach. The first one would be to uh, learn a, a global policy for, uh, for every building, but it's, it may be really complicated because uh, there's a lot of, uh, of, um, of building types. So maybe it won't apply to every building and you have a, a suboptimal policy. Uh, the second naive approach would be to, uh, to, to learn a policy for every building. But in practice, it's hard to uh, deploy such system because uh, uh, there's a multitude of buildings and so you have to retrain an agent uh, uh, each time. So what we are proposing is uh, identification of common profiles. And uh, so we have only to train uh, a certain number of policies based on the based on those common profile. Then we are going to, to associate every new building to a known profile to uh, to apply the the already uh, already trained policy. So to identify common profiles, uh, we took the historical data of uh, our buildings and we 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 used the a pipeline to uh, to um, calculate the the distances between the the time series. So we took the derivative of uh, of every time series at each uh, at all points to get the trend of the series. Then we use a feature extractor, uh, uh, which is the the, the 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 Fourier transformation, to accentuate a significant frequency related pattern in the data, because we know that uh, that energy consumption is really uh, anchored into uh, into uh, frequency patterns. Uh, then we use the DTW, so dynamic time warping algorithm, uh, to uh, to to match the the different uh, points in the time series to focus on patterns with uh, within the time series that shows uh, a, a pronounced frequency dependencies. And then we use the hierarchical clustering method. We use the agglomerative form, uh, which um, which starts as a, each of the observation is considered as, as a single cluster. At the start of the process, and then we pair clusters uh, at each generation of the of the process. So now we have to we can with this method identify uh, common profiles, and we can uh, train policies for each of those profiles. But uh, if I have a new building, how can I uh, map a new building to a known uh, common profile? So we are going to use uh, the exact same pipeline. We are going to take the new building. And we are going to take a, a time series that is representative of each cluster. So if we have 10 clusters, we are going to have 10, uh, 10 representative time series of uh, one for each cluster and our new building time series. We're going to use the exact same pipeline, but we are going to only take the, 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 the measure at the DTW level. And then we're going to, uh, to, um, to consider that our, our building, uh, is part of the cluster for which the, the, the distance measure is the lowest. So we applied our method to uh, to, uh, to uh, our test data set, and we identified the three clusters. Uh, this is the, the figure on the left on one year of data. But the problem is, if I have one year of data, I need for each new building to wait one year to get uh, the, 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 the consumption profile and then map the, 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 the consumption pro profile to a known, uh, to a known um, profile so that I can apply my, uh, my policy. And one year is, uh, is too much. For us to wait, so we want to know if we can uh, map a new building to a profile with uh, with uh, less data. So we applied the same method on uh, only one week's worth of data, and we compared the the result of the clusters. Uh, we we show that uh, the clusters are the same, so we can uh, so we can validate that with with one week of data we can identify the consumption pattern of the building. Uh, so uh, the overall framework is as such. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see the classical uh, reinforcement learning loop where the agent interacts with the, the environment and, uh, and the environment uh, uh, gives another state to the agent. Here we have the, the action, masking, action ma masking step, which is the post processing that we, uh, that we talked about uh, previously. And here, uh, instead of having one agent, so one policy, we have W agents. 
which uh, corresponds to uh, the the W clustered clusters we identified with the clustering method. We also have on the left hand side the the the, the correction model with the the fully connected uh, MLP to uh, to identify a uh, high time of use uh, period. So uh, the result of our approach, uh, we can see that. Um, we can mitigate from uh, seven to fifteen percent uh, the, the the cost of uh, the financial cost of uh, of using uh, electricity for the needs of the of the building, and uh, we can see that um, uh, we don't uh, gain much on uh, on carbon emission. This is because uh, the, the 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 pricing uh, is uh, the pricing tariffs are at the are at the hour level. But the, the, the emission uh, pricing is at the, the day level. So we cannot, again, the agent focuses on, uh, on, um, on optimizing on the short sequences rather than on uh, like sequences of uh, multiple days. So we don't uh, gain much, but we can see that uh, with our method, we don't, uh, we don't over consume energy. So it, it remains the same as, uh, as the case where, uh, where we don't have an energy management system. Uh, so here you can see a, a graphic of, uh, the, the representation of the actions of the of the agent in blue is the is the the state of charge of the the storage unit in uh, orange is the the consumption of the of the building and in yellow is the high time of use periods that we talked about so we can see that the agent discharges the storage unit when the cost is uh, is uh, is is really high and this is what uh, we we intended with uh, with our approach what we can say about uh, our approach is when we look at the graph uh, this graphic we can see that there are uh, peak load consumption. So this uh, on the on the end user, it's uh, it's fine because uh, you want to, to reduce the, the the time where you use uh, um, high cost energy. But this can have an impact on the grid, on the on the perspective of the grid operator. Uh, and we can see that there are very deep discharge phases, and uh, this may have an impact on the storage system. So for so for uh, so for uh, further uh, uh, research. We can uh, add more uh, objectives into our uh, into our uh, reinforcement learning uh, agents, so that it takes into account uh, such uh, such uh, such uh, objectives. Uh, in the perspective, we want also to uh, to make longer uh, sequence prediction using LSTM, uh, so that the agent can gradually uh, charge the the storage system rather than uh, than uh, than peaking just before the the the, the high time of use tariffs. Uh, we also want to integrate this uh, predictor directly into the actor critique so that the um, the, the actor network can share the parameters with the with the with the prediction module in order to have a better representation of uh, of the actions that uh, may be beneficial for the future so uh, i leave you a set of references and uh, if you have questions i'm uh, i'm open to answer